Many years ago here at the V8 Speed and Resto Shop, we used to do like almost daily updates of certain cars that we were building online. And today we kind of do longer term build videos, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to just check in on this particular car and maybe we'll shoot a few blogs along the way before we deliver a final polished feature video. So Jordan, you've been working on this 68 Camaro. Uh, tell me, first of all, how did this car arrive? What kind of shape was it in when it got here? Uh, when it got here, we had a, a, a rolling body, basically. Kind of a clean slate for us to work with. Car got here, customer kind of put the car before the horse. The paint was already done. Okay. So we've been kind of working around that and uh, kind of had to backpedal on a few things to uh, you know, shoehorn this uh, supercharged LSA in here. So normally we like to do all the mechanical fitting so that we can cut, weld, grind before the things in paint. Exactly. Take them apart, body work, paint it, and then final assemble it. Right. Like you said, this one showed up in paint. So right. um, there's some bare steel here and there. What's going on with the firewall? So firewall got cleaned up, um, got rid of all the holes in the firewall. Some of the, uh, when it got here, we started messing with it and we found a lot of mud work on the firewall, so customer approved. We got rid of the old firewall, put a new one in to properly make it a nice, clean, flat surface. Uh, over here, we've got a little bit of custom work going on. Um, had to recut the hole for the fuse box as well as uh, our fab guys did a really nice job of uh, our clutch master cylinder bracket mm -hmm. is actually now part of the firewall, so it makes it a really nice, clean install. Uh, once it's all painted up, it'll look like it was supposed to be there. Sure. And one thing I'm noticing is that smooth, clean firewall concept. Um, you still have an air conditioning system, but it's kind of hidden. Correct. Uh, so what they actually did when, when this firewall is going in, they welded the uh, AC box brackets onto the firewall, uh, allowing you to have that clean firewall and obviously have a secure way to mount your uh, HVAC box. For sure, without having fasteners come through right. the firewall. Right. And I think that's a nice feature too because it allows us to tuck that AC unit, that vintage air box, up higher to give you a little more a little more foot room. And then I guess the hoses go through the fender. Yes, uh, we got them all hidden up through the fender and then into the, uh, the factory routing Yeah, as far as into the uh, cabin. That's clean. So the engine <clears throat> is a supercharged uh, 6 2 liter LSA. But this is a stock subframe, and it looks like a factory-style front accessory drive. So what had to happen for that to fit? So the accessory drive is actually factory from the uh, ZL1. Uh, the only thing we did modifications-wise is we uh, adapted slash got a CTSV power steering pump and bracket and everything to go onto this engine. Uh, so it'll work with the factory accessory drive. Um, and then the subframe wise, in order to get that alternator and AC compressor to fit, we had to notch the subframe out. So getting it to fit was kind of fun, but uh, I think in the end, we ended up with a real nice clean product and well, factory components, you can actually get those readily. For sure. And even some of the aftermarket subframes don't have a lot of room down there for that AC compressor on that side and, and the alternator here. So um, unless you go with a completely different uh, front accessory drive that moves everything, which you can certainly do, but you kind of lose that uh, that OE flavor that he was going right. for. Uh, so some other cool fabrication things. I'm noticing a pretty nice air intake tube. What's going on with that? So just finished that up. Um, we've got just in-house built a air intake tube, uh, mass airflow adapter, obviously, uh, so it retains that. This is going to be factory uh, engine management, so we needed to keep our mass airflow. Um, here in the corner, we wanted more or less a cold air intake, um, but one thing that's really nice about custom work is it looks cool, but rarely is it serviceable. So uh, we tried uh, coming up with a way to make the air, air filter come out in a reasonable amount of time. Um, so we got six fasteners, little adapter comes out, service your filter, goes back in. That's clean, I like the way that looks too. We've had cars in here before where it's like, yeah, change the, uh, change the oil and the air filter on my LS conversion, and this thing's buried so far in there, you got to you know, almost take the fender off to get right. to it, so that's a good point. Uh, and speaking of cold air that this is trying to pull in, we have a CNR cooling system with a bunch of connections. Uh, what's going on with our cooling package up here? So CNR uh, 
radiator. Um, I think it's small uh, fans and everything on there, so they'll actually be variable speed. Um, so they will be able to kick on, but they won't kick on at full speed until they are truly needed. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll also be able to control those with, when AC comes on, we'll be able to command them on. Um, as far as that goes, pretty standard. We actually had to, with this being a factory takeout transmission, it's a manual transmission, but it's still got trans cooler lines. Uh, still got a pump in there, uh, so we had to. We actually routed that into the factory cooling, uh, so it act, the radiator is acting as our trans cooler as well. Yeah, and that's like that's a TR sixty sixty. Correct. Yep. Not many manual transmissions have that pump and that cooler, so that's a little bit unusual. So you basically order an automatic radiator for that application. Yeah, cool. And these CNRs are, are nice units. We've used them a lot with a lot of good success. Uh, Brake-wise, it looks like I see, obviously see the Willwood Master and the uh, Hydro Boost unit. Yep, we've got a CPP uh, Hydro Boost unit. Um, we got a Jones Racing uh, dual port reservoir so that we could run our Hydro Boost properly um, and not have to tie our return lines together. Uh, keeps everything flowing a little better. Right, because if you don't have an extra port on the original reservoir, which is plastic uh, on a lot of these cars, you just put a T fitting, yep. and sometimes that doesn't flow very well. No, it'll you can feel uh, it in the pedal. Yeah, you can feel it in the pedal, and you can also end up having some power steering noise a little bit. And then uh, we've got a Borgeson box on this one. Correct. Yep, real nice stuff. Connected to it, we've got uh, full ride tech suspension underneath as well. Yeah, so a lot of really good, interesting parts choices um, that are all being made to work, you know, together and. Sometimes we see cars where people have bolted stuff on, but they don't all work together in harmony or they weren't engineered into the car like that hydraulic clutch master and, and this air filter and stuff. And all that matters. So I'm looking forward to uh, hearing this run. Uh, so far for you, what's been the most fun on this car? Uh, I love the, uh, the custom fabrication. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. The making the intake, uh, engineering the serviceable air filter, um, the subframe. Modifying the subframe was uh, real interesting because I liked, uh, at first I thought it was going to be a pain, which it was, mm -hmm. uh, but afterwards I think the reward of having that factory really low mounted uh, accessory drive was rewarding when you walk up the engine bay. It's real nice and tucked. Yeah, it's cool. So we'll follow this car along. Um, maybe next time we'll look at the bottom side. We'll look at the suspension and the exhaust work and all that kind of stuff. So Jordan, keep up the good work and uh, you can continue to follow this car either on our website at v8speedshop.com or subscribe to the YouTube channel and then you'll get an alert if you ring the bell uh, on the next update on this supercharged 68 Camaro.